The Lord be with you. Jesus speaks hard words that our flesh cannot stand. But by these same words, he gives us life so that we would not die, but live forever in Christ Jesus. So we'll be doing a presentation on an upcoming trip to teach in Africa during the Bible study hour in the Lake Bureau today. Let us open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sustain us by your son's life. Help us always to continue and abide in him and live by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If your Lord kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? You therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live, and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, but he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. 
but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, on how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. And whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe, and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. Men and for our salvation. 
be seated. O Lord, of my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I give is for the life of the world. What is it that you strive after? What do you hunger for? Our sinful nature strives after the passions of the flesh. Power, popularity, fame, fortune, glory, and living for our belly. Rebellious by nature, fighting against the holy God. For Israel, the Lord had taken good care of his people. He had saved them again and again. They were the object of his eye. They were delivered out of slavery in Egypt. They were rescued from the iron fist of Pharaoh. They were brought on to a wilderness journey, to journey to the promised land. And God gave gift upon gift to his people. He opened the Red Sea with a blast from his nostrils. And the people walked over on dry ground. He led them by a pillar of cloud by day, shading them from the intense heat and a pillar of fire by night, providing warmth in the cold desert. And each day the Lord gave gifts. He rained down bread from heaven, manna. In a place where there was only death, God provided life. And all of these gifts were received with thanksgiving, thanking God for what he had done, honoring his holy name. But for Israel, there was no thanks on their lips, Rather, their lips were filled with grumbling, whining, complaining. They grumbled against God, and they grumbled against God's servant, Moses. They were in need of repentance. Psalm 51, hide your face from my sin and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I'll teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guilt, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Out of God's love for sinners, he has given you his one and only son. And when Jesus arrives, he preaches the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near. Repent. Jesus teaches as one who has authority. His words are filled with the spirit to show that God's word is true. Jesus does miracles. He feeds the 5,000. He opens up the eyes of the blind. He unstops the ears of the deaf. And he raises the dead. Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. But Jesus calls the crowds out for their motivation. You're seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. For all the times we strived after what was evil, sin, greed, lust, coveting, selfishness, popularity, Jesus comes to take your sin and nail it to the cross. He comes to give his life for the world. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead that repentance and forgiveness of sins be preached in Jesus' name to all nations. And there on Good Friday's tree is your sin in Jesus' body broken and his blood shed. It's your freedom. You are free from the bondage of sin. You're free to live in God's promises. You're free to hunger for what is good, right, and salutary. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And after Jesus had fed the 5,000, the crowd simply wanted more 
spread. They didn't want to hear God's word. They didn't want to hear Jesus teaching. They didn't care about the doctrine of the church. They had no concern for justification, no care about how a sinner stands before the holy God. Rather, the crowd was there demanding, give us more bread, give us more drink, feed us gluttony and apathy, ears that were dull and hearts that were hard. The crowd treated Jesus like a vending machine. Just give us more. Eat, drink, and be merry. They wanted more bread, but their ears were shut to the teaching of Jesus. Much the same today. Rebellious attitude, we see it much in the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, honoring the word. And the Sabbath day is broken with breakneck speed. Look at church attendance in America. Apathy and indifference rules the day. Indifferent to the Bible. Apathetic towards doctrine. But give out freebies and people will line up out the door. Free bread next week and this place will be packed. Wanting nothing to do with the word, the crowds leave in droves. Group by group, they stomp off as an angry child. And Jesus knows it. And he turns to his disciples and he challenges them. Do you take offense at this? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go as well? Here we are today, living in the Word of God. And your attitude is not that of running away. You're God's chosen people. You're his holy nation. And you get to go to church. You get to hear the word of God. He set you apart in your baptism. He gave you his spirit. He's called you by name. You are his baptized children, holy and precious. And you get to hear the word of God in its truth and purity. You get to confess your sins to the Lord. I heard you this morning. Confess your sins to God. We get to receive the forgiveness of sins all for Christ's sake. We confess our sins to the Lord. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We get to hear the good news. We get to hear the gospel. We get to feast today on the very body and blood of Jesus, filling us with peace. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you will be satisfied. We get to hold the sacred scriptures in our hands. We get to hold them in our ears and our heart. And Peter preaches this word, and he preaches it boldly. When there was the challenge, do you want to leave as well? Peter boldly confessed, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you're the Holy One of God. Peter learned how to pick up his cross and follow Jesus. Peter learned how to live as a Christian. Peter learned to live by the word, to have joy and contentment to honor the word above all else. The sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, reproofing, correcting, and training in righteousness, that you, man of God, might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Peter repented of his denials, his threefold denial. I don't know the guy. He repented of his sin of turning his back, wanting popularity at the cost of the truth. He left that behind. No longer ashamed of the gospel, Peter is a relentless preacher, living by faith, confessing, Jesus, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who's in heaven. I tell you, you're Peter, 
And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Striving. What do you strive after? That which is God-pleasing. Learning to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Learning to live by faith. Loving God and caring for our neighbor. The word is near you. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For the heart one believes and is justified. With the mouth one confesses and is saved. And Jesus charges Peter to feed the church. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed them with my word so that the church learns to confess, Jesus my Lord, Jesus my God. Peter proclaimed Jesus as the only rescue for us sinners. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that at the proper time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxiety on the Lord, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded and be watchful, firm in your faith, the God of all grace who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore you, confirm you, strengthen you, and establish you in the faith, walking humbly before our God and confessing Jesus as Lord. May God grant it to you for Jesus' sake. In the name of Jesus, amen. Rejoice in our Lord's gifts, rejoice in his word. We as God's people bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord. Please stand for the prayers of the church. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. Lord, in your mercy. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless those who proclaim your truth that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith in you may be strengthened and your kingdom extended. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, send forth laborers into your harvest. Sustain those you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people and the gospel preached in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, grant health and prosperity to all in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, comfort all who in trouble, want, sickness, peril of death, or any other adversity, especially Doug, Connie, Michael, Rod, Sherida, Harrison, Vivian, and Peyton. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to guide Zion and bless her in the search for a cantor. We thank you for giving us musicians to edify us and uphold the word of God. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, we give thanks for the life you have created and redeemed by holy baptism. Bless Vivian as she comes to the waters of baptism and keep her safe in Christ our Lord, who rose to life for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, comfort the family of Deb with the power of Christ's resurrection, that they may always hope in you. Lord, in your mercy. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young and to all lawful occupations. Lord, in your mercy. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood, your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, 
Grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him in the death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it and remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.